Hey guys, today we're going to talk about my recent build with the Diamondback um, cover, bed cover, truck bed cover, and the front runner load bars. And I did this primarily to mount a rooftop tent. I wish I'd got the Diamondback cover a couple years ago when I got the truck because uh, it's a great cover, but uh, this kind of justified the purchase and like everything else, you it's like a domino effect. You, you buy something, then things add to the project. So anyway, uh, what we're going to talk about today is the install. Uh, the iCamper Mini is the uh, tent I went with. I'm going to wait and do a separate video for that on its own. But today we're going to talk about the install of the Diamondback cover and the front runner load bars. Now, a little bit about, that's the finished product, by the way. A little bit about Diamondback. Okay, they're a US, a US based company out of Pennsylvania, uh, which is great. Love supporting US based companies. Uh, and they make a great product. They always have. They've got a great reputation. I've got friends that have had these covers for years and they absolutely love them. Uh, if, you want to start, if you want to carry like ATVs and things like that, this is about the only way to go. It's a great great product. Now they offer a couple variations of this product. The SE is their standard. It's uh, got a weight capacity of about 400 pounds. That would have been sufficient, I'm sure. They do recommend for rooftop tents to go with the HD, which is the heavy duty, which is what I did. But if you're on a budget, you could, um, you could go with the SE probably. Uh, they just won't they won't support the fact that it will work with a rooftop tent. I think it's for legal reasons, but anyway, the difference in price, the SE is 1700 bucks and the HD is $2,100, about a $400 difference there. Um, as far as the other variations for these uh, covers, this is a smooth, they call it a smooth finish. Uh, it's really not smooth, it's textured, but their standard is a diamond plate finish. So the options now are diamond plate black, diamond plate aluminum, and then the smooth black, which I love the smooth black, especially when you're mounting things to it. Uh, the surface just is a little bit better for mounting things on top of it, of the surface. So um, those are your choices. And with this design, these panels, you can see this latch here, uh, these, this panel uh, lifts up. There's hinges in the middle. There's a middle section here that is secure, okay? And these two panels, the front and the back, lift up on these hinges, okay? So you have access to the front, access to the back with your tailgate uh, uh, even up. And the access to the front is this latch right here. Okay, obviously I can't open these now because the rooftop tent is on there, okay? Which brings me to another, um, another thing I liked about this solution um, is because these load bars are mounted independently on these panels, once the rooftop tent is removed, I can open these panels. Now, if you have a setup where they're all integrated, then obviously you'd have to remove those to use the, uh, the cover as far as opening the, uh, the, the panels. Um, another thing too, um, as far as Front Runner and Diamondback, they have partnered. So this is now a kit that you can purchase. Makes it a little bit more convenient to buy it all at, uh, from Diamondback. Now the kit comes with two load bars. I've got three. I just wanted that added security for uh, having a little bit more support um, in that middle section. So I went with three load bars. Uh, the spacing of those really is whatever you want to do. Two of mine, are at a space that are, it's equivalent to mounting this match track. So it was kind of uh, set by that distance. Um, the third one you could put anywhere you want. Obviously I put it in the middle. So that is, um, that is the, the build. It turned out really, really good. I uh, didn't really have any problems at all. I'm gonna show some pictures. I didn't take any video footage, but I'm gonna show some pictures of the build because uh, there are some things you need to consider. One thing in particular, when it comes to the Ford F-150, I have the Raptor, I think all 150s are like this, but I definitely know the Raptor is, and you might be able to tell by this view, is the bed is tapered 
it is not square. So therefore the cover is tapered. So as you see on this edge, it's pretty close to the edge here. But when you go up to the front, a lot more distance. So obviously for the load bars, you need this setup, these rails to be square, to be parallel. And these edges are not parallel. They're tapered in. It's, it's wider at the cab end than it is on the, on the uh, tailgate end. So you got to keep that in mind. And I'm going to show some pictures of, um, of how I taped that off to get it square. So you pretty much have to work from the center instead of the edges. Uh, but you know, it's very doable. Not, not that bad. Let's take a look at the inside and I'll show you uh, how this works. Okay, so on the inside, what I want to show is, first of all, the way this locks in. It's great, very secure, great idea, very secure. And uh, a little arm here, when you, when you turn the, see how it moves. So when you turn the latch up here, it moves this down here and it goes up under this lip, which is what secures it. This is just a guide that guides it in and goes up under, up under this lip. So that's how it works. It does that on both sides. So it makes this very, very secure. All right. And then uh, this thing mounts and the, the same locking system is on the front side as well. Okay, same, same setup up there. So the same locking system. In the middle, you have these C-clamps. And uh, that's what holds the entire unit on. And you've got these on both sides. So uh, very easy to install. Um, and the panels come off. When you, when you raise them up, you have to disengage the, uh, the uh, struts and then they just kind of uh, slide off to one side and off the hinge. So uh, very easy to remove if, if you needed to. Not something you wanna do every day, but um, not a big deal to do it. Now you can see too the uh, way this thing is built, all the support. Now that's the difference between the SC and HD. The HD has more supports than the SC, which makes sense to hold the, uh, the, uh, the weight capacity difference. So anyway, that's it on the inside. Another thing I want to mention is this the rubber gasket uh, that keeps things very, I wouldn't say it's waterproof, but it's very water resistant. I mean, if you hit that thing with a, you know, at a car wash really hard, I, I, water will get through there a little bit, but uh, it's, it's pretty, pretty tight as far as uh, dirt and water and all that good stuff. So about as tight as it can be. Um, and you have to play around a little bit with the setup to make sure the tailgate will still close. So uh, again, wasn't, wasn't a big deal as well. So that's about it. I think that's all I can think of on this uh, Diamondback cover. Absolutely love it, recommend it. And same goes with the front runner load bars. Okay, let's get started. Uh, these pictures, like I said, I didn't take any video, but I'm gonna go through these pictures and show what I did to set up the uh, proper locations for the um, front runner load bars on the, um, on the cover, on the um, Diamondback cover. Okay, so first I taped the perimeter. Okay, just went along the edge and taped it uh, to give me a reference point and then found the center line which actually is where the back latch is it's directly on the center line so <clears throat> i taped that as well all right so once you have that oh and by the way the, a load bar makes a great straight edge as you can see in this picture uh, it, it helped out tremendously so if you don't have a straight edge already that's that long the load bar works out fine okay and then uh, you want to um, determine what distance you need between the uh, support rails for the load bars. Um, my distance on this Raptor was 60 and a quarter inches. That was inside edge to inside edge of this rail. Okay, <clears throat> so once you've determined that, uh, I put, as you see in this picture, three pieces of tape in the general area that that is 
which gave me the, um, and I, then I measured to make sure they were in the right places. And then from that, you can, you can stretch a, a piece of tape along those three. Okay, so that gets you in the general area of where that load bar mount is gonna be. And the tape gives you the ability to, to make your marks. You know, obviously you can't make a, a mark, a good mark on the diamond mat cover itself. So the tape gives you that surface to mark on for reference. So uh, once you have that tape down, you can then uh, mark accordingly on uh, where you want the uh, load bars to be positioned. This picture shows you how much taper there is in this, in this um, setup, quite a bit of difference. It's not a square uh, bed to the truck, that's for sure. Okay, so once you've uh, determined the position as far as across the width, you need to also look underneath, as I'm showing in this picture, on the obstacles in there. So you see where your holes are in the, um, on the support rail, and you wanna position uh, you know, front to back on each panel where you wanna position this, um, this rail. Cause it could be anywhere along that, on that line. Uh, the side to side is very important <clears throat> and they've gotta be square as I mentioned, but the front to back placement um, is to overcome these obstacles. You know, the support beams and any kind of brackets and that kind of thing that you're gonna be drilling in from the, uh, the top. So as you see what I've got in this picture, I've got a piece of tape you see up there at the top. Uh, when I got it in the location I wanted to front to back, I put a piece of tape up there just to give me a surface to mark on. So I would mark where that front edge of that, that mount is. So when I close the cover, I knew where to place it on, on top. Okay, so there you've got uh, the, the rails, uh, the, the, the uh, rails for the support, the support rails for the um, load bars in place where I want them and I mark my uh, holes for drilling, okay? This is the part that makes you most nervous, obviously, because uh, drilling into your brand new Diamondback cover that costs you $2,000 is not the most pleasant experience there is. So, measure, measure, measure when you feel comfortable with it start drilling. Um, I think drilling through the tape helped as well as far as the uh, smoothness of the hole. And on the other side, when you do drill in, I took a little uh, little uh, Dremel tool and just kind of smoothed out the other, the other side of the hole. Um, so anyway, that's about it, uh, things to consider. Here's the finished setup, turned out great. As I said in my other video, because they're independently mounted, I can raise the, uh, the front and back panels without removing the load bars. So that works out great. So I uh, hope this helps. Okay guys, that's gonna do it. Hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, please like and subscribe. It'd really help a lot. Uh, we've got a lot more videos we wanna do, a lot more gear reviews and some other things we want to accomplish as well. So um, look forward to doing that in the near future, including the iCamper Mini video with the Annex. We really look forward to doing that one. Um, so anyway, uh, have fun out there. And uh, as always, thanks for your time.